Hello guys, today we're going to rank Jurassic Park dinosaurs based on their paleontological accuracy. I'm only gonna do the first movie, since any more would make the video too long. Anyways, first up we have one of the most iconic dinosaurs in the franchise, also creating one of the most iconic scenes. Alan, this species of veriform has been extinct since 1000. The Cretaceous period. I mean, this thing is a month. This thing. What? What? Of course, I'm talking about none other than the Brachiosaurus. It's definitely a top tier dinosaur. But that's not what I'm here for. I'm here for accurate dinosaurs, so does it hold up? The first thing that we need to look at at the head, specifically, the nose placement, because the nose holes on the JP Brocchio was on the top of its head for some reason, a feature which was definitely not on the real Brocchio, so minus points for that. Also, the JP Brocchio is seen rearing up on its hind legs to eat, but the accurate Brocchio would have broken its legs under its own weight if it tried to do that. The last thing with the Brachiosaurus is that his was probably much more of a big chungus. That's pretty much it for Brachia, a tier. Now onto another herbivore, one that was barely even featured, the Parasaurolophus. I can't make out the model from this movie, because this is its only screen time, but the same model is used in other Jurassic movies, so I'll check those. My biggest complaint is that Hadrosaurs are the weakest creatures in the franchise, and they don't fight back. Like how did one die with a lasso knocked down a 4 to 5 ton behemoth, and why did it just fall pathetically and didn't even try to scare them away? This makes me rage so much. It's also slightly smaller than the real Paro, and much less of a chunk. Also, the real Paro would have been quadrupedal 90% of the time, but with the JP Paro, it's the opposite. It is. At least it doesn't breathe fire. Next up, the Dilophosaurus, probably one of the most infamous designs. Oh, oh nice boy. Oh, nice boy. Nice dinosaur. Oh, thought you were one of your big brothers. You're not so bad. You're not so bad. What do you want? What do you want? You want food? Look at me. I just fell down a hill. I'm soaking wet. I don't have any food. I have no food on me. I have nothing on me. Come on. Come on. My pets, my pets, my pets. Look, stick, you stick, see stick. Yeah, yeah. Look, 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 stick, look, stick, stick. Stupid, that's a stick boy. Look at this. Yes. You like your stick? Go on, get it. The first thing I want to say is that the movie Dilo is actually much smaller than the actual Dilo, the movie one being about the size of a dog. In reality, the Dilophosaurus would have been two times bigger, even bigger than Nedry. Also they gave it a frill and venom, which is something so wild, it should be in a savanna. <coughs> That's it for Dilo. Sit here. Now we have probably the best dinosaur yet, from a paleontological standpoint, the Triceratops. I really don't have much to say about it, ST. Also I forgot to mention, that every bipedal creature in the Jurassic franchise, with the exception of Hadrosaurs, has pronated wrists. Anyways, now we have Gallimimus, which is just like the Triceratops, perfect, except that they aren't feathered, had pronated wrists, IT. And now, probably the worst one of all, the Velociraptors. Get your ass and now, for undoubtedly the most famous dinosaur of all time, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. First of all, the real T-Rex was slightly smaller, 
and was much more of a big chungus than Rexy. Also, it would 100% be able to detect you even if you're perfectly still. BT. And there you have it guys, the Jurassic Park dinosaurs ranked by paleontological accuracy. Like and subscribe now, or else. Bye guys.